Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Here's a weekly segment with Cape Breton Council MP Mike Kellaway. Today we talk about addressing the gaps in the federal government's financial aid package for fish harvesters. We also ask him about help for the tourism season. Here's our conversation. Would the package be available to wharf staff as well? So, as you mentioned, it's a it's a, it's about a half a half a billion dollar announcement, primarily for Atlantic Canada. There's some connectivity to uh, the West Coast. Um, so the way it's set up, we, as many of your viewers know, there's the fish harvester benefit, which is the wage subsidy. Uh, there's the fish harvester grant, which is the ten up to ten thousand dollars to help self-employed fish harvesters um, on, on capital sides and provide them more liquidity. And then there's some substantial changes uh, to self-employed fishers and chairpersons with respect to access to EI benefits uh, based on last year's earnings, not this coming year's earnings. Now, what we've what we what we've identified is that uh, when it comes to say uh, those that are on the docks and 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 and, and the crews and things of that nature, uh, we're working right now on on um, addressing that gap in terms of ensuring that the uh, the, um, the benefits are uh, accessible for those groups. So uh, not only is it on our radar, it's in our discussions right now. I think uh, the day after the announcement, which would have been last Thursday, so that would have been Friday, um, we were on the horn, my office, to talk about how great the announcement was and how beneficial it was and how it was really informed by fishers. But now we need to look at uh, gaps within the, uh, the sector and look at addressing them ASAP. So. I'm confident that we'll be able to address those for, for, the, for the, the dock hands and things of that nature, uh, people that work in that and, 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 that, and that particular part of the fishery. Um, and we'll be working on it. And um, the great benefit of being on with you weekly is that I'll be able to give updates as we go in terms of how we're working on that, not just my office, but other offices as well uh, with DFO. Um, but it's not just DFO, and that's one of the things, uh, you know, the viewers. Uh, uh, probably would benefit from it. It's something that I've seen firsthand. You have DFO, but DFO is a part of it. You have other departments that have to be in the mix, like Service Canada, the Finance Department uh, in particular, uh, and um, those three are, and then in some cases, a co-op. But um, we're working on it. I've identified it, talked to a, a, a few people about it, uh, and um, we'll keep you up to date as we go with respect to it. How about EI for fishers who have underlying health conditions? If they decide not to go fishing, would they be able to access EI in the fall? Well, I think that there's another great question. You're, you've got some great questions there. So uh, I, in all honesty, they are. So if an individual has an, an underlying health condition and can't go out to fish this year, um, uh, I'm gonna double check on that one. I think one of the scenarios, and, and, and like I said, I'll have to check into it, is if you had an underlying health condition, you're looking to go out to fish, um, I think the first and foremost piece would be you go on CERB for the 16 weeks. Um, but um, after the 16 weeks, and to your point, there may be a gap there, but um, we would take those on a case-by-case -case basis as well, because I think that there's a legitimate, in my mind, a legitimate claim to look at those that have, you know, health, underlying health conditions, can't go out because of COVID. Um, they would go on the 16 weeks and then I would, uh, would want to take those cases case by case and look at um, their ability to access EI uh, because I think there is a case there. So that would be an individual case by case as of now. So people would apply and then it would be studied on, on their file after they apply. So let's say person X, um, is efficient, is nervous and quite rightly so to go out for obvious reasons. Um, they would apply for EI. They would go right into CERB, right? Because that's how it's set up now. So they go right into CERB for the 16 weeks. But while that's going on, my office would work with that individual to look to see uh, on a case by case basis what we could do in terms of, of EI. Until we come out with a particular policy on that, it would be one on one, one on one, uh, which we do quite well. Uh, and we, we've not necessarily in the case that you just uh, documented, but 
Um, that's how our office rolls. We take case by case and we champion each, uh, each le legitimate cause. And that's what we do here. I, I wanted to move on to other seasonal workers, like people who work in tourism. They also need EI. Is there something being worked on right now to help them? Right. So, so right now, again, when it comes to, to, to tourism, we have some, some dollars that were allotted to uh, the regional development authorities in ACOA. And it's not EI, but it is the ability to keep people's businesses afloat that do not meet current measures that we've announced recently. So I know for a fact that there's a lot of tourism operators going to ACOA to seek assistance in terms of that particular uh, pot of money. When it comes to seasonal workers, say outside of the fishers, for example, uh, tourism, creative arts, we're working very, very closely uh, with the creative arts uh, community in the riding, actually. We've had uh, two very, very uh, important and very substantive meetings in terms of providing recommendations to uh, culture and heritage on the support they need. Um, so we're working on that. And when it comes to the tourism side, um, there is no doubt that uh, all attentions are now and have been, but even more so now, on the tourism sector in terms of the ability to provide capital to small and medium-sized enterprise, but also um, some assistance with respect to uh, extension of CERB or, or EI. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, with this virus as we've seen. But we know that, or we can make a very, very educated guess that the season that we have coming before us tourism-wise will look different from last year, which means that there'll be a whole host of complexities and challenges. You've identified one. So we're, we're, we're working on that as well, uh, not just for tourism uh, operators or people that work in tourism or the service sector, but um, in other, other uh, sectoral-based uh, um, work. And uh, that's, that's being worked on as, as we speak. Well, the, the one thing that you can take um, uh, to heart is that uh, government is, is, is working uh, pretty much around the clock to look at all these gaps and how we play a role. And not just during COVID, but post COVID, uh, which means uh, what does recovery look like? Uh, what does recovery look like for municipalities, for First Nations communities, for Acadian communities? Uh, and our office is at the forefront of those discussions. I can assure you of that when it, when it comes to infrastructure, whether it comes to IT infrastructure or investing in people. Uh, we're, we're at the table uh, like we were with respect to the fishery. We were at the table. And, 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 I, and I do want to really want to take this time to, to thank um, the fishers, the fishers' families, uh, men and women across this riding in terms of uh, I think we counted up to 85 meetings over the past nine weeks um, with uh, folks on the west side of the island, the east side of the island, and northeastern Nova Scotia. Um, I think what we illustrated here is that much of what you see in, in, in the, the $500 million announcement uh, came from uh, people all over the sector, uh, within the sector, across the riding, and, and my office, and, and public servants listening to our recommendations. Those three recommendations, those three recommendations came from men and women who work in the fishing industry. And uh, I'm really, once again, proud of the riding. And I think this shows what we can do uh, when we're working together um, in a very, very confined timeline. So special thanks to, to, to the riding and everyone that worked with us and, and, and helped us quite frankly. You can send us your questions from Mike Kellaway at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.